Welcome to the circuit, Ricardo Tormo. Welcome to Valencia for round two of the Formula Winter Series. Yeah, I'm finding it uh, really interesting. Uh, it's uh, such a different track from Jerez, but I'm ready for everything. Yeah, there's a very big chance in this race. We had very good race pace that we did in practices uh, yesterday. So I think I have the pace to win it, and I think I'm going to give it everything I got. Is this your first single-seater race now? Yeah, this is my first single-seater race. Definitely excited and uh, ready to go. We're underway then for the first time at Valencia and it's a great start from Andres Cardenas. He leads the way into the first corner. Griffin Peebles under a lot of pressure from two of the Drivex cars. That's Cota and Pedersen hounding the MP Motorsport driver. Everybody cleanly through the first corner by the looks of it. And uh, that's Garda Pedersen trying to get the inside of Griffin Peebles. Juan Cota then already through into second place. Rene Lammers in the distinctive number nine car there further back in the field it's the orange car with the black and white details on the front nose cone great to see once again this huge field of cars but we've got one with a damaged front wing that's Colnagi in the 87 car running with a damaged front wing so he's gotten into it with somebody around the circuit rest of the field streaming through there Dower de Decker under some pressure from Jan Pshirovsky. Pshirovsky making his first appearance in the car that was driven by Carrie Schreiner last week. Look at this, three wide further back. Rene Lammers to the outside there. I believe that's uh, Thomas Straubin on the inside line for Rodin Motorsport. Quite surprised to see that uh, Colin Aggie is still running there with the damaged front wing. It's right there between the wheels if it slides under one of the wheels that could be quite catastrophic he's losing time losing positions and lacking grip but still he runs on just being swallowed by the pack there pack on uh, Wiesenberger there looking to the inside of one of the Enza cars as well everybody working their way around Kolnagi One has stayed relatively clean with the exception of Colnaghi in the first couple of laps, but it's forcing them to go two or three wide having the wounded car around the circuit, and that does rather make you clench up. And, well, the safety car is now out, unfortunately. We've got two cars in the gravel there. One of the Monlau machines, that's Lenny Reed with one of the cram cars as well. But we are soon back to racing action. Look at this daring move going on here. Pedersen being attacked by Machai Guadish. Machai Guad. Oh, and Pedersen goes flying there. Pedersen just caught the outside curb at turn one and absolutely took off. That was a heavy landing for him. I understand he's okay, but that was pretty scary, and the safety car is out as a result. We have. Got the race back underway pretty quickly, though. Two safety cars already, making up for the relatively clean weekend we had at Jerez, I suppose. One of the Campos cars there under pressure further back in the pack. And now Juan Cota is under threat from Griffin Peebles. Peebles dives back to the inside. He wants P2 back. Uh, Quota, though, on the outside line at turn three. That's the inside for turn four. Surely that should be a position retained for him. It looks like it is. Meanwhile, that was Bart Harrison looking to the inside. And Gianmarco Pradell getting past there, the 21 of Lucas Flusher. That was for seventh position. So Pradell making his way up the order. Dower de Decker under threat here from Bazinalos in the 46. Bazinalos with a very half-hearted look to the inside there. Pack on Weissenberger, very committed as he gets himself past Rene Lammers. But Lammers using the outside of the circuit there. They've got to be careful of track limits. There were some issues in qualifying regarding track limits that meant that uh, the practice times were taken to form this grid instead of the actual quali session. Track limits a hot button topic in the paddock this weekend. Meanwhile, 
Towards the front of the order once again. Dedeka. Oh, he makes contact there with Pesharovsky. That was for 10th position. And Dedeka getting himself in trouble there. Losing a couple of places. And after all of that, Bazinalos ends up in the top 10. Nathan tie up in the top 10 as well. Pesharovsky goes back past Dedeka. And now Rene Lammers wants to go at the GRS driver as well. Lammers to the outside at T4. Can he carry the speed all the way round? Certainly pretty even between the two of them. And yes, Lammers around the outside. Very nice move from the young Dutchman. Starting to find his feet after a tricky first weekend at Jerez. Side by side between Flusha and one of the uh, Campos drivers there. That is the 49. That is Nathan Tai. That's for... Eighth place, in fact, that's Nathan Ty getting up into eighth place there. So Ty continues his impressive momentum, but we've got red flags. We've got Pacon Wiesenberger off the circuit. We've also got Francisco Macedo off the circuit as well. So two cars off track, four minutes left to go. They weren't going to get this one started again under green flags. So the red flag ends the race early. And it ends the race in favor once again of Andres Cardenas. He wins the race ahead of Juan Cota and Griffin Peebles, your top three. Matrai Gwadish taking fourth. Delight once again for the Peruvian. Another perfect start to the weekend. Yeah, sure. Um, I feel very honored to score this win. Uh, yeah, I want to thank all my team, all the person that have supported me, and yeah, we keep going for tomorrow. Bianca Bustamante, the first of the female racers home. She gets a trophy as well. And the first of the rookies is young Machai Gwadish. But your overall podium topped by your championship leader, Cardenas. We're underway then with race number two, and it's a very good start from Griffin Peebles, but he's got Andres Cardenas on his inside as they run towards the first corner. Cardenas with the high ground then, with the inside line. Can Peebles hold on as they go through turn one? Everybody else files through, and it is Peebles just about in the lead. Machai Gwadish there in third place. Cardenas locking up. Gwadish a bit wide at corner exit, but he does retain third place despite the best efforts of Akshay Bora behind him. Everyone looking for track space in the first few turns. So critical to keep yourself clean through the first few corners. Worry about gaining the positions in a big way later on. Oh, Bazina lost there going wide further back in the pack. He's got one of the uh, DriveX cars trying to go around him. Nathan Ty now on his inside three, four wide as they run out of turn six. It is Daytona 500 weekend, and some of them are taking that approach to racing firmly to heart. There you see them, two, three, four wide, trying to find space, and inevitably at least a couple of them go bouncing. That's Kabir Anarag going off the circuit onto the gravel trap, but he powers through. We do, however, have a safety car. Now, why is the safety car out? It's because of the Technicar machine of Victor Dobzanski and one of the Campos cars. That's Ernesto Rivera. Ernesto Rivera also coming to an early halt. Safety car is withdrawn fairly promptly, though, and we are back to racing. And look at that. Uh, Gianmarco Pradell fighting for fourth place with his teammate there, Akshay Bora. Bora going defensive. Juan Cota there just behind as well. Oh, and who's that? That's Bianca Bustamante. Oh, that's a huge shame for Bianca. She was running within the top 20. And she has been knocked off the circuit. There was a telltale front wing belonging to somebody else there in the gravel with her. That's a huge shame for Bustamante. Meanwhile, Machai Gwadish having to defend from Bora, from Pradell, from Cota, from Maxime Ream as well. In fact, no, sorry, that's Matias Ferreira in seventh place. Ferreira having another strong weekend and all oh, Juan Cota going wide there. So easy to do coming out of turn five. Side by side with Matia Kolnagi now looking for a better race after he lost his front wing yesterday. And Kolnagi looks to have got past Cota as well, although that's very deep into turn eight. And that allows uh, Cota to actually work his way back through there. Fiorentino in the top 10 for the first time as well. That's really good to see as Juan Cota continues to have to fight for these positions. Rene Lammers 
now side by side with the Drivex competitor that of course won last time out at Jerez. Lammers fighting for this eighth position then. Yes, it's so hectic further back in the field. Never really know where to look in these FWS races with so many cars out there on the circuit. De Decker going wide, trying to defend his position. Everyone compacting around the corner. That's uh, Tim Gerhardt's there alongside Dower De Decker. And there is Bazinilos just ahead uh, of the 37 car from Cram. So Fiorentino falling out of the top 10 there with Bazinilos working his way back up. Is that Flusha? Yes, Lucas Flusha trying to work his way around one of the Yenza cars. I think that could be Hideg potentially that he's having a scrap with there further back and a big dive from Bazinilos there. Uncompromising move at turn 11. Fighting for 11th place there. We've got one car slowing as well further back in the pack. Oh, and unfortunately, front wing right on the apex of turn three. They'll keep racing for now as De Decker tries to get past Pusharovsky. Pusharovsky holds on to the position. There's Alexander Savinkov. He's fighting further back in the AKM car. To the inside there of Adam Hideg in the 24 machine from Yenza. Some smoke further ahead of them. And oh, it's the number 49 car having a moment there. That's Finn Harrison. Finn Harrison with what looked to be suspension damage there. And that's brought the safety car out only momentarily. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go then. A sprint to the line. It's Peebles from Cardenas, from Gwadish, from Bora, from Pradell, your top five. In sixth place there is Ferreira with Juan Cota just behind him or around the outside of him potentially. Cota gets through there. Ferreira may drop a position unless he can really dive it towards turn four. But we've got another car off. That is Macedo who once again has rotten luck in this race. Safety car was taken back out there. And we have now a one lap dash to the flag. One lap left to go in this race. Then as they go back to green, it's Peebles from Cardenas. Gwadish under some pressure here from Bora and Pradell. Pradell to the inside for P4. And that could be third place because Gwadish potentially has a penalty looming over his head for how he lined up in his grid slot. I understand we're expecting him to fall back through the order. So Pradell going past Bora there for fourth place. But that could well end up being third. Gianmarco Pradell opened up the door there on his teammate Bora. And now Juan Cota wants to try and get past the US Racing competitor as well. But your winner will be Griffin Peebles. Andres Cardenas will settle for second place then on this occasion. It's a great result for Griffin. A second win of the season for him. Cardenas takes second and third place Machai Gwadish did initially get a penalty. But he was later reinstated. Investigations after the race determined that he was indeed able to finish third place. You had a lot of safety car restarts to deal with there. One of the most difficult places to do it, isn't it, here at Valencia? How was it dealing with all the load? Uh, yeah, we had a very good start. Um, I got the tires up to temperature very well. We had a decent start. We had a little, I had to defend a little bit from Cardenas at the start, and I got a small gap, and it got bigger and bigger. But we had that first safety car. I made a good restart of that. Then we have another safety car, and then I tried to get another good restart, and then we had, I have too many to count. So every restart was good, and the opening laps of that are very important to just get that gap. And we had a last lap shootout just for the finish, and he couldn't keep up with me. So I'm very happy with the pace and hopefully we can do the same in race three. Leah Block is the first of the female competitors home. Great to see her on the top step. A slightly different looking podium in the rookies. It would eventually be Machai Gwadish that would be declared winner and Gianmarco Pradell third on the podium there. He'd later be returned to fourth. Race three begins then and it's Matthias Ferreira this time. Drag racing with Griffin Peebles down to the first corner. Juan Cota there, grass tracking a little bit further back in the pack. This is our third and final race, the last opportunity for these drivers to make an impact here at Valencia. And after the chaotic race number two, we're hoping for fewer impacts in general. It's Ferreira though that leads the way. 
two, three wide, further back. Oh, and Savinkov gets tagged into a spin there. Oh, and he's collected. That's Lorenzo Castillo of Technica, who has ended up in the side of him. Both drivers okay, but the safety car is out as a result of that collision. Back to racing conditions then. And some side-by-side -side further back there is the 73 car of Emanuele Olivieri fighting for P10. It's Gianmarco Pradel passed him for 10th position. Pradel, who was on the podium earlier, then got that podium taken back away from him after Gwadish's penalty was lifted. And look at that, just ahead, Maxime Rehm side-by-side with Pshirovsky. So Pradel could get a two-for-one here as these two continue to scrap. That's certainly what Jan Marco would prefer as he tries to fight his way back up the order. Contact there, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing for eighth position here. Maxime Ream locking up a little bit there around the outside of Pusharovsky in the Campos car. Fabulous racing as uh, Pradel has gotten past Pusharovsky and so has uh, Olivieri as a matter of fact and Pusharovsky falling through the order because here comes Bazinolos as well in the orange MP car but the inside beckons at turn four for Pusharovsky so I think it'll be okay certainly under a lot of pressure a dive further back from Lucas Flusher on Adam Hedeg Flusher really not getting the starting position he would want in any of these races he did however clear the way uh, for the other car of Dorizon there and Maxime Ream into the back of Kabir Anarag. That won't be popular in the us reigning awning and it's allowed Gianmarco Pradel past both of them. We have Juan Cota stopped on the circuit as you saw just there as well and as we go to safety car, a collision there between Anarag and Olivieri. Juan Cota suffering with an electrical issue here. That's why the car has come to a halt. Uh, but now returns to pit lane. We're back to racing conditions. And Ferreira is still your leader from Peebles in second place. Cota has gone back out there, but again, the car is slow. So it looks like Juan Cota's day is coming to an end. Hopefully he can get that back so we don't need another safety car. Side-by-side -side action there with Flusha demoting the 99 Roden car of Thomas Strauven and Strauven getting a bit crossed up there in the gravel as is Rene Lammers. Lammers goes dirt tracking. He's having a good fight here with Finn Harrison. Harrison around the outside. And that contact, uh, definitely not preferable for Harrison. Don't forget he had suspension damage earlier. And we've got one of the cars off circuit from Yenza. That was Dorizon. Arthur Dorizon, who was at one point the leading Yenza car, he has issues, but no issues in that race for Ferreira. He claims a win ahead of Peebles and Dawe de Decker, who did a great defensive job holding on to third place for GRS. That's that team's first podium of the season. He's ahead of Bora and Andres Cardenas, who critically loses points to Griffin Peebles. They're now tied on points. Amazing. It was very special to get the first one in. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy. My first win of the year. Uh, I did a really good start, went P1 in the first lap. So yeah, I was really fast. I just managed the gap to the guy behind me. Uh, I had confidence. So yeah, he was really good and I'm really happy. Great results then from all of our drivers. Maxime Reem, the first of the rookie trophy drivers on the podium. This man, Ferreira, celebrates a win. Peebles now tied for the championship lead with Andres Cardenas heading into our next event at Aragon then. It's all to play for in the Formula Winter Series. Round three and four coming up in early March.